Okay, right, hello and welcome back to another video. Uh, today is going to be hopefully the last of these update videos uh, and then the next time um, we come back to this project we will have finished it. Uh, things are starting to get pretty close to done, filling out the uh, the scene with various smaller details and things. So um, still missing a few elements. You can see here the, uh, the tower, if I put it back in, um, from the original is, um, is missing. Um, but hopefully that will be coming soon. That's sort of the last big piece to do. Uh, but lots of little details have come in in the last couple of weeks. So um, hanging chains, we'll come back to them later on, but they definitely add a lot to the environment, both here outside and uh, in the cave as well. <coughs> we have a um, new version of the magic orb uh, and a higher res quality sculpt on the, um, on the statue itself. So just kind of using the original as a base and then adding a bit of extra detail in ZBrush. Um, the orb has additionally um, some animation in it from the blueprint. And so it's a particle effect and it's tied with the dynamic light. And so it's a little bit expensive. Um, we've got a moving dynamic light, but we get these nice shadows as that moves around. And then that also the intensity of the, of the lights and the particles um, all kind of tied up together. So as it bursts up, and moves to the highest point, it also spawns these little particles uh, and the lights obviously inside and brighten up and everything, which is uh, which is working quite nicely. Nice little dynamic element to that. Um, cool. Uh, we've reworked the material a little bit. It's a constant battle. Uh, keep adding new features to the master material and then taking them away and optimizing that and trying to kind of organize and split that. But I think we're um, at a good place now. Still using the um, where are we? Buffer shading model. Still using the subsurface for the snow, uh, and you can see that also here on the um, on the statue, um, and also on these chains as well. So adding the snow on top um, gives us a uh, nice response for the for the material for the snow. Uh, still need to do a pass for that for the bridge. Um, the snow on the static elements, and then kind of maybe some icicles and and just sort of little snow clumps, a bit more detailing <coughs> on the bridge to come. Um, but it's definitely getting there. Uh, moving on inside of the cave, uh, we've added a few uh, kind of braziers. Um, I think we might need to do a special one here that sort of fits with the rocks, but um, hasn't had a pass on the fire yet, which is just a, a template asset that I have, um, which is why it's way too big. Um, but hopefully that will kind of work a bit better. The original just had the fire there on the rock. so didn't make any sense. So we've kind of given it a little bit more reason to have something there. Um, you can see it probably needs a lighting pass as well. This element of the um, kind of edge of the cave should be lit up, but maybe I can just do that. Something like that. Well, I'll do a bit more of a detailed pass on that later. Um, we've added in quite a lot more structure these cave props. Uh, again, it didn't really make sense having the cave kind of so bare. Um, there wasn't really anything there. Um, whereas now we've got this kind of like mine shaft type uh, technique or, or motif to it, which I think really adds quite a lot. Um, gives it a bit of reason to be there. Gives us some nice straight edges to go with the organic. Um, if I go into unlit, you can see it's a nice bit of structure. It's going to help pick up some lighting um, and those kinds of things. So um, really nice set of kind of environment assets for that. Uh, you can see here more of the chains. Now these are um, either, well, most of them are these particle chains. So these are incredibly expensive uh, and total overkill, but they are fully dynamic uh, particle chains. 100% um, not the right way to do this. Uh, it's really expensive in terms of budget, spending about two milliseconds alone just on simulating um, particle chains everywhere. And all they really do is get a little bit of subtle movement in the wind, uh, but it's quite cool that we can do that in Niagara um, and it's going to come with a big caveat saying please do not do this in your projects unless you really really need the uh, the interactive elements that this gives you um, but because this is a tech demo I can kind of get away with it a little bit um, much less can they? Um, <coughs> the other way we've done the chains uh, like ones outside and this one in here um, is with a blueprint spline this is a much more realistic way to do this so uh, maybe I'll do it with the one outside but if we select the chain uh, if I select the chain, 
and there we go. Uh, we have a blueprint spline, so if I come out of game mode, I should be able to find the spline point at the end. And if I move this, now for some reason it doesn't update the spline. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't, but um, it's just a refresh issue. So if I go back to my spline and then select and sort of reset something, uh, we can see we can kind of adjust the points where this is needed. So we've got one, one chain coming in, another one goes down here, one over there. There should be some more added up here in a bit as well. So there's still some set dressing definitely to do. Um, but the blueprint spline can make that a lot easier. Um, and then the other thing that has with it, if I just can undo that, put it back where it was, there we go. Um, we have this chain center parameter. So the movement on this, it's not physics, it's not simulated, it's much more optimized. It's just a bit of world position offset. Um, but we need to know where the center of this chain is. Now with the bridges, I was a little bit lazy. Uh, and if I open up the bridge, and I break out the other materials. Uh, I just made a, a function um, that does my world position offset for the wind. Uh, and I just manually defined the center point of my bridges. So I know there's two bridges. This is the center point in world. So I can use world space coordinates uh, with a sphere mask and a radius. Uh, and the two center points of my bridges allow me to then have this bridge and all of the ropes and all of the materials that make up the bridge share that data. Now that's fine, um, but probably I should do it a bit like I've done here. Um, with the chains, I don't just have two. I've got at least these three you can see here, plus one inside. I'm gonna add some more up there. It starts getting a little bit heavy. I'm gonna have like seven or eight different parameters. So rather than doing it um, just in the material, same idea, but I've done it via a, a blueprint parameter. So um, in the material itself, <coughs> we create a material instance um, and then we assign a uh, actor location and we assign a, a vector parameter and we assign the actor location to that. And so we can kind of edit it per blueprint um, and each blueprint will have an instance of the material um, that has separate values. Uh, we're also still using the custom primitive data. If I go back to the end, uh, where are we? Here we go. Um, so I'm just setting a custom primitive data uh, value to be a random value to sort of define how much snow is on the chain um, so that each one gets a different amount or kind of some random variation at least, <coughs> which I think helps break that up, um, which is pretty cool. Um, the location here, um, it is a chain center. It is a vector parameter. Um, in order to get the 3D widget, there's an option here, to show 3D widget, just allows you to edit that position uh, in world space. Really nice when building these kind of tools. Um, obviously we could plug something in at that position. That would be fine. Um, I think actually when I wanted to get it for the um, for the bridge, I just created a, a cube um, and then put it there and copied the location manually, but that's not a very nice workflow. Um, so instead what we can do is we can do it via a uh, blueprint parameter and then click that exposed, um, exposed 3D widget. Um, which is pretty cool. If I move this chain center away, it's gonna lag horribly because it's just recalculating the, um, the chain, but you can see now it's not moving because it's using this as the center point of that world space sphere mask. Um, there's also a radius parameter. I guess we could try and do something to preview the radius, maybe have a, a sphere that's only visible in game mode or not in game mode effectively um, with a very, very low opacity and you'd see a sphere there that was defining it. But depends how much time you need to put into your uh, your tools but I definitely think the um, the center point makes a big big win and it isn't a huge part of UI cool where else are we so moving further inside we've got the new structure and um, the waterfalls I believe were work in progress last time and I've had a bit more of a pass on them so we've got a base mesh uh, let's turn translucent selection on uh, with the scrolling material um, there are unique materials for, or at least material instances, um, for the one on the rocks and the one here, and then the bigger ones sort of further back, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, there's a falling particle system, uh, and then there's a few extra planes to kind of back that up where the, um, <coughs> where the water will be sort of foaming up and, and sort of rapidly falling. Uh, and then lastly, there is a decal um, with some scrolling normals to help kind of bag that up as well. And so if I turn that off you can see it looks a little bit sort of disjointed whereas if I turn that on we've got that extra bit there as well so um, 
it's not perfect I could definitely spend another couple of weeks on this uh, but I think it, it sort of sells the effect um, quite nicely and you've got sort of the caustics and the light coming up as well uh, ripples and splashes in the water uh, and then it's a nice single layer water um, yeah thin translucent the new single layer water shader um, so you get nice reflections and things in fact if you go over to the um, to where the new statue and things are in you get nice screen space reflections or rather not just screen space is it still using planar I believe I've done the planar reflections in general no so not using plain reflections, just the single layer water giving us nice reflections there as well. So both the old statues have been replaced, um, again using the same um, sphere particles and you can see that a little bit of movement I was talking about before. Um, and a bit more detail just in this area as well. So um, this stone plinth, another one of these braziers, again this is all still work in progress so it needs another pass on the materials. Um, set dressing and things like that so still quite a bit to do uh, and then finally yeah the, the sort of the waterfalls here so same principle as before we've got the decal on the on the rocks we've got falling particles um, oh, well, let me hide that because I'm in game here we go uh, and then a mesh base mesh underneath um, a bit more forgiving at this distance this distance but works quite nicely so um, so yeah getting there um, Still needs a lighting pass, still needs some more polishy details, um, still needs to finish up the set dressing and interiors, um, but hopefully it will be done pretty soon. Um, Going to do little individual parts, sort of smaller snow effects coming in through these openings as well. Um, need to do something to mask out the sky. The original just had some glowing planes. Obviously there's some back faces missing and things, so I'll probably do something similar. Just some emissive cubes up there or emissive planes um, but yeah lots of little details still to come um, but hopefully now the main body of the work is in um, cool if you have any questions or comments about this scene or about real-time vfx anything in unreal um, please do let me know um, as always big thanks to my patreon supporters uh, for supporting the channel letting me do these kinds of breakdowns and projects um, it's a big help if you'd like to become a supporter there is a link below you can go and find that uh, and then um, yeah hopefully in a couple of weeks this will be fully finished and then available to download and you can pick apart and see all the all the meshes and techniques and materials and everything that's gone into this and how it's been made um, and use it as a sort of a an example project for your own learning um, which hopefully will be really really useful um, yeah cool as I say, any questions, let me know, and I'll see you all next time.